Are you in a relationship with Evernote and wondering if it's turned toxic? Did you jump in because the water was warm, but now with slower speeds, higher costs, and strangers looking at your data, you suddenly feel trapped in hot water? Here are the three signs that your relationship with Evernote has become toxic, and three things that you can look for in a new thinking partner. Then if you're ready to go through with it, we'll cover exactly how to break up with Evernote and move in with your new best friend, Obsidian. Three signs it got toxic. Your partner is stalking you. You started noticing that it's tracking your every action. Create a note, Evernote knows. So for me to show you this, let's hop into Obsidian now. So Evernote knows what you did last summer. I'm gonna twirl this down and show you a PDF. And I've highlighted something I'd like us to read through together. But first, you can save a PDF in Obsidian here, and then I'm linking to specific sections here. So what I want to draw your attention to is actions you perform when using the Evernote service, creating a note, sharing a note, and who knows what else because they don't go further. Did you ever integrate your contacts with Evernote? You likely did. And now Evernote knows everyone you know. Sure, leave your phone with me. So if we look in the context section, we can see that Evernote may use your contacts to auto-complete email addresses. Essentially what they're saying is you should give us all your contacts information because we can do this one helpful thing for you. But in reality, you've essentially just kept your phone unlocked and crossed your fingers that your dangerously possessive partner doesn't start scrolling through all your contacts. Good luck with that. And the last part of this stalking is that Evernote can use your words against you in ways that you're not even aware of. What does that mean exactly? So would someone at Evernote ever view my content? And then they talk about reasons when this might happen. And then they have a huge disclaimer at the bottom that says this policy is not intended to apply to our use of aggravated, de-identified, and anonymized data. So essentially they're saying we might look at it in these situations and also we might look at it in these situations, which is everything. So I have little, little trust in Evernote. This is a partner that is stalking you. Let's go over to number two. Hey, by the way, I'm Nick Milo and I'm here to help you get your thoughts in order so you can become a little bit more prolific at whatever it is you like to do. And if that's for you, I'd really appreciate if you'd hit the subscribe button. That tells me you wouldn't mind seeing a few more videos. All right, back to it. Toxic sign number two, your partner never lets you speak. Evernote, by its very nature, is great at capturing words. The problem is they're usually not your words. They're the words of someone else out there on the internet. And they felt important to you at one time, but now, now it feels like noise. And worse, it's blocking the really important thoughts of your own, your cherished memories, your ideas. The noise is drowning out this signal. Now, this is supposed to be a treasured space of yours, a place to help you remember and make sense of the world. But now, now it's just a bunch of other people's words. How do we get here? Well, let's be kind to ourselves. We didn't know better back then, and we captured way too much. So now if you feel like Evernote is painful to interact with, it's likely because your partner never lets you speak. Toxic sign number three, your partner left the country. How would you like to wake up one day and learn that your partner moved to Italy overnight and completely ditched all of their old friends? That's exactly what Evernote just did. It was bought out by a company in Italy called Bending Spoons. And half a year later, they fired everyone. So whoever you might've had trust with at Evernote, they're no longer there. Whoever cared about honoring your privacy, they're not there. You are just another user with an estimated lifetime value being objectified in board meetings. How can you trust Evernote when everyone, everyone who ever worked at the company has been fired? Wow. Researching this piece actually riled me up way more than I was expecting. So if you feel your relationship with Evernote has become toxic, now let's explore the three things that you can look for in a new thinking partner. Three things to look for in a new thinking partner. Number one, your partner is responsive. All right, so after being in Obsidian, it's really hard to use other apps because they're just so slow. And get this, while we're waiting for a web page to load, our thoughts, they're not waiting around, they're gone. If you want to work closer to the speed of thought and have your app catch up with your mind, you'll want to consider using Obsidian as your new thinking partner. Number two, your partner can be trusted. I don't get using online apps for your personal notes. I mean, your most intimate information on someone else's server, 
your private thoughts in someone else's hands? I mean, that's crazy. Now, Obsidian offers end-to-end -end encryption, which means this, you can have files on your phone, communicate to files on your computer, and everywhere in between, it's encrypted. No other notes app keeps your information more private. I mean, how often do you see this in the app store? And the third thing to look for in a new thinking partner, number three, your partner isn't leaving the country. Most apps blind you with the shiny, then in the darkness bind you. Before you know it, you can't leave the app without some sort of serious digital surgery. The good news is it's a lot easier now as I'll show you in just a second. Now with Obsidian, even if it vanishes tomorrow, you would still have all of your files readily available as files on your computer in a format that's easily readable. And that's what we mean by being future-proof. Okay, so are you thinking about making the switch? Now let's look at how. Okay, now for the moment of truth, let's figure out how we can escape Evernote and hop into Obsidian. So how do you export from Evernote properly? Now the mistake is opening Evernote, especially if you haven't downloaded it already in a long time, and going from the most up-to-date release, you'll actually get trapped. It'll want you to provide a credit card, it'll give you a seven-day trial, and after those seven days, Evernote starts charging you. I mean, this is just a way to ruin the relationship even further. Now, if you want to bypass that, at least on Apple devices, you can go to a place like macupdate.com, I believe, and you can get Evernote version seven, and you won't need to input any credit card information. You can just do the one thing that you need to do, export your notes. Now, how do we do that? Okay, so I'm sharing my full screen for a reason. Just so you know, in the background, we have the actual script of today's video, and we are now on how to switch. So how do we export from Obsidian? We're going to be saving a .enex file. Where do we save it? How do we export in the first place? Let's answer that. So when you open up Evernote here, and when you do, you want to go to all notes and select a single note. Now, while you're doing that, then you'll hit Command or Control A, and that's going to select all the notes here. Now, you go all the way up to File on a Mac, and we're going to go to Export Notes. Now, first thing you'll want to do is give it a name, and you might say, like, you might just say All Evernote. Let's keep it simple, All Evernote. And you want to make sure to include tags for each note, and you notice that it's a .enex file. That's what you want. And then the question is, well, where should it go? So if you have the ACE folder structure that's part of the Ideaverse system, you'll go to Atlas, All Vaults, and for now, I'm just going to put it into an example vault, but I would normally put it into My Vaults, all those different knowledge management systems that we might have had over the years. So let's go Example Vaults, and you can see I've already exported right here. So I don't have to go ahead and hit Save, but if I did, it would take about five minutes to package up all these notes, okay? So that's what you wanna do. Go ahead and hit save, and then we'll bounce out of that, and we'll look into the next part. Now you have this new file. First, what do we do? How do we import into Obsidian? So how to import? The first thing that you're going to want to do is go to Community Plugins, and you want to browse for something called Importer. So here it is, right here. This is from the core Obsidian team and we can go ahead and use this importer. So now that it is already installed here, it adds a button to the ribbon on the left. So I can just hit this button and it's going to import data. Right now, I confirm I want the Evernote file format. And then I'm going to look for the files to import and I want to put it in an output folder. So where do I want to put these files? So. Now, if you're part of the ACE folder structure, you want to go Atlas, Vault, and then, excuse me, Atlas, Vault, and then Evernote. So if I browse this file, I go Atlas, I'll find my vaults, I'll find that example vault, and I'm going to click on my .enex file and go ahead and hit open. So now it's loaded, everything is ready to go. I've already done this though, so we're not going to waste any time now. When you do hit import, so I have about uh, 3,100 notes and double that in total files. So it will take, I think it took around 10 minutes to do the import. So just hold tight, it will take some time, but wow, it's doing a lot of work. So let's pretend we hit import. Okay, thousands of notes from Evernote have been imported successfully into my Obsidian Vault, but where do they exist? 
So if you remember, I put them in Atlas, Vaults, and then made a new special vault for all those Evernote notes, all 6,895 files. So what we're going to do is we could just open this and see everything that, that exists here. But what I really want to do is open up the graph view and look specifically at this folder. So let's open up the global graph and we can see that the path has already been set. I have it going to Vault, Evernote, and we're getting all that information here. So it's coming in as we speak. Now, this is the time that I want to go into the Ideaverse theme. Currently it's called the LYT mode and it will eventually be known as the Ideaverse theme. And why this theme is so important to look at is because it's beautiful and it's like a universe and it's cosmic and it allows you to recognize, whoa, notes, ideas, we can fly around this information, this knowledge. We can have a lot of fun wandering. Now, what you're looking at here, all the yellow dots are notes. All the purple dots are notes that have not been created. Now we can turn on tags and that's where things get really wild because I had a lot of Evernote tags. Now, that looks like I had a healthy thinking environment in Evernote, but the tags are misleading. We can also turn on attachments, all these gray nodes. Now we can see how it's really expanding. And we can also say existing files only, that will get rid of the purple. So let's turn off tags, turn off attachments, and we'll keep orphans on. Because what I want you to notice is that even though this was in Evernote, I actually still made some links. It was very painful to do that. It was very painful to create these maps of content that I created over here. I have a, a special project near and dear to my heart here. Um, but for the majority, things are not connected. And what is not connected is what is lost. Once you connect it, you can relate it, you can understand it, you can work with it, you can create with it. So that's the beauty of this. So this is my Evernote vault. Now, I showed you how I imported it into my personal Ideaverse vault. Now, here's why you might not want to do that. If I open up this sidebar and I look at the tags, I will see all sorts of messy tags from Evernote. All the tags are there because I asked during the export of Evernote to export the tags. And I want those. I want that information. So what I recommend most everyone does is actually open up this Evernote vault as a separate vault. And here's how you do that. So you go to Atlas Vaults, Evernote, right click and reveal in Finder, show in File Explorer, whatever operating system that you are on. And you'll notice it's right here. I can track it down the breadcrumbs and I want to now create a new vault and point it at this folder. So what I'm going to do is go back to Obsidian and open another vault. Now I want to open a folder as a vault. So that's that middle choice here. And I'm going to find it. If I recall correctly, we're going to go Atlas all vaults, example vault, and let's go example import. I actually set this up ahead of time and we're going to import into Evernote. I have a few extra folders because I need to keep some things private, but we're going to hit this magic button. And now we have all those notes here and it's doing a quick index. It's already done. Okay. So we made the new Evernote vault into light mode, Ideaverse mode. And now we can go into the graph. And now we can see that graph. We can actually see that it's quite snappy. And if we go to the tags over here, we can see all those tags, but now they won't be cluttering up this vault. And I can actually, knowing where this is saved and knowing the vault that I opened up was in a separate location, I would feel comfortable deleting this. I will do that eventually, but I don't want to do that right now. The point is you have your Evernote notes right here ready to go, ready for you. A lot of these are old. A lot of them I have not looked at in a very long time. Okay, so just to reiterate, you have two options with where you store your old Evernote notes, either as a subfolder in your main Ideaverse, or you can have it as a completely separate vault. And we looked at that here. Now, if I were you, I would likely do a completely separate vault. Now, quick side note, if you're looking for guidance on how to set up your Ideaverse, your custom learning environment where you do your best thinking, you can download this free Ideaverse kit, not with all my notes, but with the basic folder scaffolding and all these starting connections to get you going. It'll be in the description below. Amazingly, this thing has been viewed over half a million times 
and it's been downloaded over 70,000 times. So this is the most trusted way to get started linking your thinking. Now, as of this recording, when you download it, you'll see it as the LYT kit, but in a month or so, it will officially be the Ideaverse kit forever after. And I hope it helps you have a healthier relationship with knowledge. And if it does, please let me know in the comments below. And that brings us to the big point. Enjoy having a healthier relationship to knowledge. You may find that Obsidian in particular creates an environment where you actually do some of your best thinking. See, whereas Evernote encourages information management, the hoarding and shuffling around of other people's words, Obsidian encourages idea management, the cultivation and development of your own mind. And that includes synthesizing and sense-making and helping you generate your value and your voice. If Evernote has indeed become too toxic for you, it's not too late to break up. If you're feeling like a frog caught in a water pot boiling hot, it's not too fraught to hop up to the top and switch up the shop. You might just find that it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Okay, so are you switching? And if not, what's holding you back? Or if you've already switched, how's it going? Please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay connected. Hey, if you love this video and you wanna learn more about how our tools shape us, yes, our note-taking tools, our note-making tools, you have to check out this video. It is an epic analysis of four different thinking tools, actually a few more, and how they actually affect how we think. So I hope to see you there.